Hey everyone, while the Yarbroughs were here in Salinas, Ecuador, we got a chance to meet and interview them. So please enjoy part one of our interview. Thanks for watching. It's all good. Yeah, Open book. Open book. It's all family up in here. It's all love. Awesome. <laughs> How long have y'all been living abroad? Ooh. You know what? We're coming up on that anniversary because the first time we left, it was end of October end of 2017. October 2017. That's correct. 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 Yeah. How many years is that? Five. Five. Five years, y'all. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Got, got a lot of gray on this road. <laughs> <laughs> what are you telling? My hair was black when we started, and I'm oh. gray now. So, but it's I all was good. Gray when I left. <laughs> <laughs> what made y'all decide to move abroad? I think we always wanted to do life a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, we've always like we had passports from the beginning before we knew each other. Facts. So when we Facts. met. Um, we, were, we knew we were flight risk. You mm -hmm. always like to say I, that. I've been flight risk from day one. Mm -hmm. I look, I was I was a single man, couple of kids, I was looking for looking for my girl, and I kept hitting some some sour patches, shall we say? Yeah. Uh, so you know, took a hiatus from women, said I ain't gonna look up again. Met my wife, but one of the prerequisites for me was you need to have a passport, and be willing to go because I was ready to go. And mm -hmm. you know, I met my wife, and everything just kind of fell into alignment. Yeah. We got married and. I don't know, eight months later? Ten. Ten months later, we're out of the country. Uh, living abroad, do you see yourself going back to the U.S.? I always say never say never, uh -huh. but the plan is to, to build yeah. our life abroad. Okay. It's just a lot going on and, you know, to keep it mild, um, I, 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 I see the U.S. as really sour for us, for black folk in general. Um, and for people in general, honestly, yeah. it's, it's turned into a really toxic, toxic environment. And I think there are larger, more beautiful horizons out here to find, and we look it. Okay, sounds good. So, have you bought any big ticket items, right? <laughs> Cars, house, like, do you see yourself buying a big ticket item? Mm. That's a good question. Um, we haven't. Mm -mm. Purchased a big ticket item, but well, we got goals. Oh, we do. Um, well, you know, part of our game plan was to get out here, make a few different businesses work for us, and purchase property international, mm -hmm. internationally. You know, Airbnb it up, sell it up, do whatever we need to do, but manage properties internationally, okay. where the tax laws are a little bit more lenient, and yeah. we can do a little bit more with the money that we have. Okay. <laughs> we'll have. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Has living abroad changed your perspective? Mm, that's a good question. If you need to think, I can flow. Go, go ahead and get started. Absolutely, unequivocally, yes. Heavens to Betsy's yes. <laughs> um, like, I was just an ignorant child uh, in Detroit, you know what I mean? And once I started traveling within the States, it started to change me. You know, as I went and grew, it was just epiphany after epiphany after epiphany the more that I traveled. Uh, once I started leaving the country, oh my gosh, I can't, I, I can barely begin to explain, like, finding out what the U.S. has been doing in these other countries, why these other countries yeah. dislike us so much, yeah. and then we find out about the banana wars and, and the different kind of things that they've instigated, it's like, damn, no wonder, you know, mm -hmm. like, as a citizen, we're not privy to all that information, you know, you, you hear about the Cuban Missile Crisis, but you don't really know about it, right. then you go to Cuba, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and then some locals tell you about it, it's like, oh, okay, I get it, so... Yeah, it's changed my perspective of, um, I guess, an elite power, uh, flexing its power throughout the, the world, and um, me not just wanting to be a part of that system. I think for me, it's changed my perspective in seeing that people all over the world are the same. Mm. You know, you might think that uh, because you are foreign to a particular land that there's not much that you have in common, but you do realize over time that your people, right? Yeah. And you have more in common than you think. I exactly. love you, girl. That, love is a universal language. That's the other part of my, the reason I like it. <laughs> she really is my better half, man. Um, 
I ain't this super militant guy, but uh, love rules our day for mm-hmm. the most part. Even when we go from place to place, we really try to not necessarily, hey, let me give you money, let me give you that, but you know, give ourselves and try to understand whatever situation or country or city that we're in. You know what I mean? The people. And I think when you see locals and they see that you try, mm-hmm. you know, and you experience and, and uh, you experience their culture and you're not like shying away like, I don't want to mingle. That and part. More. That's yeah. true. And I found that being here, people are more hospitable mm-hmm. than the U.S. Mm-hmm. Blame myself for not being as hospitable because the U.S. has made me like I just walk in. I it highlights it on you, right? Yeah. 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 You like, guard it. You guard right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, I shouldn't be that way. So now I see myself, you know, saying good morning, yeah. good afternoon, good evening. And you know, it cracks nice. me up the the kindness that people approach you with here and, and in different places throughout Latin America, uh, throughout our travel, Thailand, everywhere, is genuine. Yes. When they say, hey, this, you want to go get a beer? You're like, dang, I, I, I just met you. And, <laughs> and you go down and have a beer with somebody, they yeah. you know, give you their life story and everything else. It's just, you don't run into that in the States. No. Or if you do, it's very rare. Very. Um, do you think that being black here gives you a pass? Do you think you're accepted more here? Yes. I do too. Yeah. We got approached yesterday. We just at the Selena sign. This guy just walks up to us, dapping us up. And I'm like, what, what's going on? He's like, American? <laughs> no, USA, right? Is that what he's he said? said Americanos. Americanos, Americanos. Like, yeah. Well, Alex, that obvious. <laughs> um, there seems to be, especially here, some kind of camaraderie with the indigenous people and black folk. And yeah. we vibe with it. Got some free ice cream too. Yeah. I was vibe with it. You know what I mean? Love it. Awesome. Now, what were your. What advice your present self would give your past self? I think we got the same one. What do you think? I kind of want to close my ears while you go, but. Okay, so just about the journey of living abroad, Mm -hmm. being abroad. (laughs) Okay, my advice would be to plan, to plan a bit more. Mm Um, to really think about like what it looks like to be here, uh, how you're sustaining yourself, and imagine what it looks like ten years from now. Yeah. And like if you have an end goal, make sure you know like the means to get there. There's a right and a wrong way to do this. Uh, we were really knee jerk. We both had <laughs> really good you know jobs in the U.S. And we're like, oh, we out of here, holla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Five years later, <laughs> you know, but. If we had a better plan going forward, we'd be better off now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, you know, uh, hindsight is 50, 50, yeah. 50. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, we would tell our younger selves to plan better. And, you know, we're still learning along the way. And as we meet people and uh, talk to people about how they're moving abroad and what they're mm-hmm. doing, especially if they're, like, not retired and not working, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, okay, what are you doing? What was your plan? So being oh. able to be privy to, you know, that sort of information really when we counsel our younger selves, we have a lot of people that we, you know, counsel. When we run that, it's always, do you have a plan? All right, well, have you thought about this? All right, well, let's make you a, a step-by-step plan before we proceed, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So that leads into the next question. What would you tell African-Americans about living abroad? Because, you know, we're our people are very hesitant, and, you know, they go by what they see on the news and instead of doing research. So what, what advice would you give? So for me, it's twofold. Um, For me, I would say that brothers, if y'all out there, sisters, if y'all out there, whoever's out there, tell somebody, share your stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that a lot of times we live these kind of lives in a bubble. We don't share like our our experiences. So nobody really knows that. Yeah, man, France is a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like racism, the way we know it in the U.S. is not racism around the world. It still exists. It's Mm -hmm. still out there. But the way that we know it, it ain't, it's not that serious. Right. It's not mm-hmm. that serious. Um, like you said, you were a little guarded here. Um, that's, I think that's like 90% of us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When you got to drive, looking in your rearview mirror constantly, you don't know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a certain armor that you have to put on when you leave the house. Right. Uh, well, when you leave the country, you have to figure out how to take that off. And I think if more of us share those stories, there might be a lot less apprehension uh, when it's time for people to get up and get out. 
I think I would say, you know, plug into communities. If you see people out there that are doing something that you want to do, mm -hmm. um, then try to get in contact with them. Find yeah. those Facebook groups yeah. and get in those communities. Ask the questions. And if you have the opportunity, take a recon trip. Mm -hmm. You know, check it out for yourself. These are places and experiences that you can't just take um, our recommendations for yeah. because mm -hmm. it might not be for them. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Everyone right. is going to experience things differently and have their own perspectives. So you have to get out there and check it out yourself. Talking to my family, get your passport, step oh, one. Right. Get your passport. <laughs> it's easy to do. I think it's $49. Get your passport, step one. If you want to just take a trip to Mexico, to Canada, just get started, man. Mm -hmm. And you will see that there's a beautiful world out there waiting for you. So what do you do for yourself on your downtime? Mm. We go to the show. Mm -hmm. um, we going to be honest? We're going to be honest? <laughs> sure. Um, I drink whiskey. Uh, let me see here. I try to find a good cigar every now and again. Uh, we definitely do the theater. We love going to the show abroad, but we watch English shows. You don't do the soul uh, in the foreign language. You tried it and it just didn't work out. Um, love trying new restaurants. Mm -hmm. We're foodies. Yeah. We're both foodies. But mostly, like, um, if we can get be blessed enough to meet locals and have them, you know, take us into their families or around the city. That's, that's butter. Yeah. Okay. So, of all the places you've been, Ooh. what was your favorite and your least favorite? Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Our favorite place. I have so many, like, secondary oh, no. questions. Like, Dang. to live, to visit for short term, for long? I mean, okay. our place of, 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 of our, our sweet spot was Italy, uh, more more specifically uh, Florence. Florence. Florence, man, loved it. Um, we actually went back twice. A couple of times, yeah. <laughs> it's the leather, it's the leather place over there. They sell a lot of leather goods, oh, inexpensive, mm -hmm. beautiful, well-made. Mm. Good food, just beautiful architecture. Didn't gain no weight. <laughs> Ate pizzas every day, pizza pasta. Every day. Yeah, because yeah. it's a walking city. You just walk, 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 walk. So yeah, I think I agree with that. Florence, Italy. Place we've lived, you know, we've lived a few different places. Well, just favorite place. Okay, favorite place, all right, we need it. Italy, Florence, Italy. Yeah. No, the opposite of that? China. My mind went there China. too, and I was like, Ah, oh. China, C-H-I-N-A. <laughs> uh, it was a horrible experience for me. Um, we went to live in central China, Wuhan, uh, taught there for eight months with a contract with Wuhan University. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the Chinese people are bad people, but it was, uh, Completely foreign environment, completely yeah. inverse, and we just wasn't ready. Yeah, we wasn't ready. You're, you're, yeah, it was, it was inverse. It was different. It was just like we're used to cold drinks and everything is hot. Yeah, <laughs> they drink hot drinks. water. Nobody just drinks cold water. They bring you hot water to your table. Um, hot you know, hot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> People are aggressive in the grocery store. You know, you, you know, I, I had to like put off an old man. It felt horrible. Oh, you know what I mean? I but that's my coach. Like, like, you ain't it, in front of me. Really, like, it really wasn't all bad, but I, I think we had a lot of our most challenging experiences there. You're so politically correct. Like, yeah, there you go. The, the <laughs> students, like the, the students that we love the students at love the Wuhan students. University of yeah, Science and Technology. That's true. It was awesome. The people in our neighborhood that we got to know from the We're markets, awesome. our stores, and We're the awesome. different restaurants we would go to, but just learning how to live in that environment and adapt to how things were you know we were like were fish in a bowl yeah. so, so we were very foreign okay. to that environment they had not seen black people before or something because man we got a lot of attention a lot of attention so you, would you, yeah. you know just so mm -hmm. do you think if you had a tour guide it would have been a better experience we had a few tour guides Every As a matter of fact, it was horrible until we had somebody take us to a couple of good restaurants. Every time we were with someone, a friend, an acquaintance, um, we always had a good experience. Except you had to go to the bathroom with squatty potties. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, like, if you're visiting, if you're just visiting yeah. and you have a tour guide and things like that, then they're going to take you to the best places, you know, the best food and different things like that. But living there is just completely yeah, is different. different. Living and, anywhere is different from visiting. You are only you can only talk about your experiences there. I, I know yeah. we have a lot of friends who love it, teaching right. in China. They got nice apartments, X Y Z, L M P, but that was not our experience. Okay. 
That was not our experience. That's understandable because mm -hmm. I worked at the university and I worked with international students. And you heard different people's experiences and mm -hmm. it was always different. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, don't go there because I got treated like this. And then right. the other person was like, oh, I had a wonderful experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I guess it just depends yeah. on where you are at the yeah. time. So, True. Agreed. Shout out to him. That's some shrimp. <laughs> Look yeah. here, it's game over. Yeah. We've had grits every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a real question. Do you put sugar? Absolutely not. You almost made me curse. <laughs> <laughs> she asked how she was.